Hello Grade Sevens, Helen here with you and that means it's time for another Natural Sciences lesson. We're moving on to a brand new topic in our lesson today and the focus of the next few lessons that we're going to be having is on mixtures. So today we're going to answer the question, what is a mixture? We're going to explore how we can put things together to make different kinds of mixtures and then we're going to explore how we can take those mixtures apart and get back to the original substances that made the mixture. So we're in for a good time and much of what we're going to learn about can relate to your everyday lives and that's important that you don't just see science as something that happens in laboratories by little old men in white coats. Science is something that happens all around you and it's very exciting when you can recognize science happening even in your own homes. So let's try and make this as relevant to you as possible as we learn about mixtures. So we can ask what is this thing called a mixture? Well, when we mix things together, we take two, at least two or more substances and we combine them. So I want you to think about what happens when you wake up in the morning and when you start mixing with the people in your family. You may have a grandmother and a mother and a father and maybe siblings, brothers and sisters and you are all mixing inside your house. And if you go to school, you mix with other families. When we go shopping, you'll see that there's a mixture of items for sale inside the shop. So to talk about a mixture in everyday language, we simply mean to combine different things together. But once again, we need to start viewing this everyday word mixture a little more scientifically. So you might be one of these people who likes a nice cup of coffee or tea early in the morning. Did you know that your coffee that you're making is a mixture? What is it a mixture of? What are the substances? Well, it's going to be coffee beans, which is a plant product. Little beans that come from a coffee plant. And you may buy a bottle of coffee that has got dehydrated or dried out grains of coffee. Or you might make a little, uh, or you might have a little bag of coffee beans, which you grind and then put it into a machine with hot water. There's our next component of the mixture is the coffee beans. We need hot water. You might find that just the coffee beans or the coffee grains and hot water doesn't taste so good to you. So you might want to add to your cup of coffee some sugar. I hope you don't add as much as this sugar, but you're going to add something to make it slightly sweeter. You might also decide that to your cup of coffee, you're going to add some milk. So we're going to take milk, hot water, sugar, and coffee beans and we're going to combine those substances together. There's the verb that we're using. We are combining or we're mixing these substances together and what we're doing is producing something that looks different and has maybe some different physical properties but the interesting thing about mixtures is they can't be one substance alone. To make your cup of coffee, you needed at least water plus coffee beans. 
If you wanted to make it sweeter, you'd have to add sugar. If you wanted to change the taste slightly, you would add milk. But you can't have a mixture of one substance alone. So if you had pure water, that is not a mixture. Pure water is one substance by itself. If you add sugar to the water, then you have a mixture. So a mixture, part of its definition is it can't be one substance by itself. It has to be at least two substances put together. But there's another important important part of our definition of mixture that is very, very important. When we put our substances together in our mixture, there is no chemical reaction that takes place. The substances are not chemically bonded or joined to each other. They're simply physically mixed together. And if we're going to take these substances and we're going to mix them together and we're not going to change the nature of those substances chemically, that means that mixtures can be separated using physical methods. Now to separate our cup of coffee back into water coffee, sugar, and milk is going to be a complex process. But I promise you, with the right equipment, you can do it. We're going to look at simpler mixtures that we can separate in a little while uh, um, later in our lessons. But what we're going to really focus on, and, and they're two very important parts of our definition, is that a mixture is always made up of two or more different substances, and those substances are simply physically mixed up and combined. They do not chemically bond together to make a new substance. So I want you to have a look at these pictures of everyday items and work out which of them are mixtures. You're going to look at not so much the plastic making up the balloon, but at the air inside the balloon. This is, you might be familiar with, jelly. I want you to look at the substance we call milk. I want you to look at water that maybe comes from your tap. I want you to look at the sea or ocean water. What about one of your favorite sauces that you put on your food? And I want you to look at this brick. Look at them and think. Which of those materials are mixtures and which are pure substances? Do you think you can work it out? What if I were to tell you that every single one of these pic pictures is in fact a mixture. Let's have a look more closely. Tap water is not pure water. If we were looking at pure water, then that would be a single substance and not a mixture. But the water that comes out of our tap has had certain chemicals. You may have heard of the chemical called chlorine that has been added to the water to help keep that water safe for us to drink. So tap water is in fact a mixture. What about milk? Milk is also a mixture. Milk is a mixture of water and certain fats and fatty substances and vitamins and other things that make it healthy, like minerals with calcium, that is another mixture. I think you probably would have identified jelly as a mixture. 
it also has water in it it has lots of sugar in it and it has a protein called gelatine in it which helps to make the jelly set into that nice wobbly semi-solid the air inside these balloons is also a mixture it is a mixture of nitrogen oxygen carbon dioxide and other chemicals what about this brick the brick is what we call a solid mixture and that solid mixture has got cement in it it's got clay in it and other additives to give it maybe this rather attractive red color what about your favorite sauce that you like to put on your food maybe it's a tomato sauce or a, a chili sauce to make it hot of course that's a mixture it's got a little bit of water in it because it's quite runny it's going to possibly have a little bit of vinegar in it it's going to have salt pepper maybe chilies or tomatoes all of those spices and herbs that make it taste so good and so it is a mixture and the sea is the sea a mixture yes like tap water the sea is not pure water the sea has got a lot of minerals added into it like sodium chloride or salt which is why seawater tastes salty there are lots of other minerals in seawater as well but we can see that a lot of things around us that we possibly thought were pure substances in fact are mixtures now i want to get back to one of the points i made a little bit earlier and give you the biscuit challenge is the biscuit a mixture so let's think about this we know that mixtures are substances that have been combined together and we know also that there's no chemical bonding or chemical changes that have happened to the substances and therefore we could separate them so let's look at our biscuit i know if you are like my daughters my daughter chloe will start by pulling out all the little chocolate chips and so yes she can separate the chocolate from the biscuit but can i also separate out the flour can i separate out the eggs and the butter that i put into this dough in order to make the biscuit no i can't here is the biscuit dough i put together flour eggs butter and i would have thrown in my little chocolate sprinkles and i would have mixed that dough with a fork i would have rolled it out with a rolling pin and up to that point the dough was a mixture but then something magical had to happen to that dough in order to turn it into the biscuit what was that magic that magic was heat energy we had to put that biscuit dough into the oven and when we added heat to all of these components of our original mixture a chemical change happened and the chemical change worked on the eggs on the butter on the flour and change the structure of those different substances in our original mixture into what is a biscuit and we can't take that biscuit now and physically break it into its component parts the only thing we could do is possibly hook out those little chocolate chips and this highlights for us the fact that a mixture is not when we combine substances and chemically change them the mixture must be the substances that can be physically separated from each other again now over our next few lessons we're going to explore different types of mixtures and then we will look at can we separate those mixtures and we'll look at a couple of techniques for separating mixtures but I hope that at this point in time you understand precisely what a mixture is. And so from Helen for Natural Sciences for today, that's it. But 
Join me again for our next lesson. Goodbye.